Challenger Sam Solomon and the late blooming hopeful Wayne Johnson. The bronze medal match for contender season three. The winner will grab 50 grand and a big boost to their career. And for the official introductions of the bronze medal match, here's Jeff Connor. Ladies and gentlemen, our bronze medal event of the evening, six rounds of super middleweight boxing action. Your judges are Leo Gertzel, Roland Milton, and Paul Driscoll. Your referee is Ed Fitzgerald. Introducing first fighting out of the red corner, he weighed in 165 pounds, wearing red trunks, his record, 34 wins, 10 losses, and 13 wins coming by way of knockout from Melbourne, Australia, Sam King Solomon. Across the ring, his opponent weighed in at 168 pounds. Wearing white and red trunks, his record, 17 wins, two losses, nine wins coming by way of knockout. From Lindhurst, New Jersey, Wayne Johnson. Wayne Johnson, Sam Solomon. Clean fight, listen to my commands, protect yourself at all times. A good fight and good luck to both of you. With referee Ed Fitzgerald. The bronze medal match. Well, let's look at the ring experience, which is a big edge for Sam Solomon. He fought for the super middleweight WBA title this past March, and Sam also gave then pound for pound elite Winky Wright as much as he could handle in 2005. Meanwhile, Johnson has only been facing six-round regional competition most of his four-year career. The one time Teddy, of course, he stepped up was the first-round knockout loss to J. Don Codrington. And Teddy, the doubts created in a fighter's mind coming off a KO loss. We always look for it early. How will he react the first time he's nailed? Well, coming off a KO loss, you know, there's shadows and parts of your mind where you don't want shadows. Little bit of dark areas where you're not sure of yourself. But what's important is the style of the opponent that you're facing that first fight back. And maybe that's a problem here for Johnson because coming off that KO loss, he's fighting a guy who will not give him a chance to shake those mental cobwebs of that loss. Solomon will jump all over you and try to stay on you all night long. One good thing, Solomon, he's not a banger. He is an awkward, relentless volume puncher. Throws punches in bunches. Sam Solomon, the 33-year-old from Australia in the solid red. Wayne Johnson in the red with the white trim. Played college football at the University of New Haven. Had a severe knee injury and worked very hard in rehab and ended up coming back to the gridiron. But in working so hard in rehabbing and conditioning himself, he went into a boxing gym where a trainer told him, hey, kid, you got some talent. He stuck with it. You know, one of the great boxing people in this business, one of the great promoters and managers of all time, Mickey Duff, once said to me, that he had a fighter fighting a guy like Solomon, awkward, all over the place, throwing punches from this place, from that place, left field, right field, everywhere. And one time somebody asked Mickey Duff, what would you tell your fighter if he had to fight that guy again? He said, how would I know what to tell him? How am I going to tell him what to do against that guy when he doesn't know what he's going to do? And that's kind of like it is with Solomon. Difficult to give advice how to fight Solomon because he's doing things and creating them as the moment comes. He's not sure what he's doing. Very unconventional. Sam Solomon. He will come at you with wide punches. He will come up forward with his upper body. His head will fall in. He'll go out. He'll come in. He'll go down low. He'll do everything except what you expect him to do. One thing that you should not do, I believe, with Solomon is chase him. Because when you chase him, you feed into that unorthodox approach and that awkwardness. You get out of position. You should stand your ground, and when he comes to you, look to time him. Step back, step back. End of one in our bronze medal match from Boston.
Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you ringside here. Live contender finale from Boston leading up to our championship match. This is the bronze medal match. Sam Solomon in the solid red. Wayne Johnson in the red with white trim. Sam Solomon, 33 years old, 34 wins in his career. Comes back to Boston on much better terms. He came here for his fifth pro fight without a trainer or a manager, and he won a four-round decision, and he told us the other day, he said, you know, I don't even remember being paid for that fight. He had a very strange start to his career, Teddy. Three of his first four fights were 12 rounders against good, solid competition. That's what happens when you start your career without a manager. You're mismanaged. Yeah, it is amazing. He was not treated very gently early in his career. As you said, 12-round fight in his third, second, third, and fourth fight of his career over in Australia. A lot less choices in Australia. Not as many fighters, not as many fights, not as many promotions. So sometimes you have to take what is offered to you. And obviously Solomon was offered very difficult propositions early in his career. Wayne Johnson has enjoyed some of the luxuries that being a part of the contender season three has brought him and some of the financial rewards that could come his way. He's a full-time carpenter back in New Jersey, but this is the first time that he was able to have a full training camp and prepare without any distractions of outside work. Some roughhousing now against the ropes. Talked about the awkwardness of Solomon, the frustration of Johnson in dealing with that. Swings wild and wide coming out of that. Again, Solomon has step lost two of his last step. three, but Solomon much, much, much more experience with much better opposition. He's fought for a world title, and obviously that experience is massive compared to what Johnson has. And again, Joe, if I was in the corner of Johnson, I wouldn't send him chasing after Solomon. I know that's what you do out of frustration. You want to go get the guy because you don't know where he is, but it feeds into the unorthodox style and the enigmatic style of Solomon because you get more out of position when you chase after him. I would stand my ground and wait, maybe faint a little bit, get Solomon to make a move through Petroli and wait for Solomon to come to me. At least you don't get mixed up in that awkwardness and get out of position so much. In other words, eventually, what goes up has to come down. So Solomon eventually has got to come to you. Bronze medal match contender finales here in Boston. Undoubtedly the number one sports town in the country. Red Sox, Celtics, and of course those unbeaten Patriots, Brian Kenny. Absolutely, and joining me now is all-pro defensive back and a key member of the super team that is in New England, Rodney Harrison. Rodney, you watch a lot of contender? I've been watching it for a couple years now, and I uh, really enjoy it. Yeah, how much boxing do you watch? You watch a lot of boxing, don't you? Yeah, well, me, me and my wife and our friends, we go to different matches over Vegas and Atlantic City all the time. You tried boxing a little bit? Again, you are, you are, a, you are a mobile, tough guy. You got in the ring a little bit this offseason? Yeah, I actually tried it with my trainer. Um, tried something a little different, and I have all the respect in the world for these guys because football training is a lot different from boxing training. And I tell you, I couldn't last one round. You couldn't last one round? Couldn't last one round. Teddy Atlas could fix you, although Teddy works with the <laughs> Jets, so I'm not sure how that would work exactly. Might get tricky there, but yeah. you know, but he could help you out. Uh, you had Peyton Manning had two shots at you guys, with, you know, with a chance to put you guys away. Why didn't it happen quickly? I think really our red zone defense really stepped up. Guys were able to make plays. We were able to put pressure on them and uh, force them to turn the ball over. All right, a, a nice bye week for Rodney Harrison. He can uh, relax and go on that unbeaten quest for the rest of the season. Rodney, great talking with you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Joe? Thanks, BK. Round three between Solomon and Wayne Johnson. That was a big statement there by Rodney. Couldn't last one round. But you've been with a lot of NFLers the past year coaching up the Jets and training them up. But it is a shock to the system when you put the gloves on, even some of the premier athletes, Teddy. Of course, one-on-one, -on -one, a whole different world. There's not 11 guys out there with you, no matter how physical and how big you are. It becomes a very lonely place, that little squared circle. But I wish Rodney Harrison would do some more boxing and maybe absorb some hooks in right hand. Maybe that would slow down that New England Patriot team a little bit. Spoken like a man who shows up in the Jets media guy, Teddy Atlas. Wayne Johnson. Oh, that's, uh, no pushing down. 
his opening fight on the contender season three. Won an easy unanimous decision over Miguel Hernandez. And then a knockout victim in the first round by J. Don Codrington, who will be coming up in our main event, fighting for the title. The interested spectators ringside. Wayne's fiance Dana, Sam's wife Maria. They know how important this is. They have traveled far to be here. You know, Joe, again, when you're fighting Solomon, sometimes you're damned if you do, Watch him draw and you're damned Watch if you don't. Watch him. If you walk in, you get out of position, and you fall into that whole awkward world that belongs to Sam Solomon. If you lay back, all of a sudden he jumps on you and he catches you cold while you're laying back. Very difficult style for anybody, especially a less experienced fighter like Johnson. A lot to ask of him. Big step up, they separate that time, and Bika fires off a wide left hand. Joe, again, if I'm Johnson, watch your head coming up. Watch your head. and it's a very difficult Wait, task, back. but there are opportunities when Solomon's coming at you. He will come at you, falling in, his head first, he'll throw punches that are very fat, very wide, stand your ground, and try to time him as he comes to you, just like you saw there, Johnson just missing with the right hand. Solomon will give you an opportunity as he comes forward if you can punch him between those wide, sometimes those arm punches. Kind of that jousting jab off the hip of Solomon. Two times in a row he was able to place it. The first, he put a right hand behind it. Now they clinch on the inside. Great, step punching, step back. Johnson graduated college with a degree in accounting from the University of New Haven. I'm sure there was nothing in that education that prepared him for this kind of style. Halfway through this bronze medal match, end of three. What's the hold? Over here. Not a lot of good spots for Johnson, but in the last round, a little bit better. And you can see what we were talking about a little there. Solomon will give you opportunities if you could contain yourself to take advantage of those opportunities. Solomon will leave his chin out there and himself available. Round number four between Sam Solomon, the former world title challenger in the solid red, and the late blooming Wayne Johnson, 17-win veteran, who Great. took a step, step up back, to step fight back, in this back. contender tournament. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas and our host Brian Kenny. Still to come tonight. Three quarters of a million dollars will go to either Jadon Codrington or Saki Obika. It is contender season three championship fight just moments away. Teddy Atlas's scorecard through three rounds. Solomon, three to zip, 30 to 27. So you almost had to feel sorry for a kid like Johnson. I mean, you can see he has a traditional style, pretty standard, very as I say, very conventional. Taught kind of like in the way of the Marcus of Queensberry Great. rules. But the problem here is Look. the rules that Solomon goes by is the Muggers of Queensberry. That's what he does. Jumps in again. He does everything but take your wallet. Of the awkwardness by Solomon. Hands drop, comes in, lunging forward, places a left hand, punches this round. 22 to 7 advantage in counting. And again, the best hope for Johnson, don't chase him because you get lost in that sea of just chaos. I think that if you're Johnson, you stand your ground a little bit, faint a little bit, get Solomon to come at you, and then try to time him. When he comes at you wide, nail him coming Wait, in. Step back, step back. Come on, Sam. Look. Maria Solomon, the wife of Sam, wow. on the bottom. Wayne's fiance Dana. You can see the concern on Dana's face. Time is running out. Come on, Wayne! That's it, straight back there, straight back. Solomon ducking low again here. Center a few times in this fourth round. 
Pepe Correa in the corner of Wayne Johnson, imploring him to fight, stop boxing, go after him, just touch him, throw the uppercut, do something. He's going to get an earful in about five Thanks, seconds. They will have two rounds to go, Solomon and Johnson from Boston. Big crowd here at the TD Bank North Garden enjoying this bronze medal match and they are psyched up to see the contender season three finals coming up at the conclusion of this fight between Sam Solomon and Wayne Johnson. Teddy, we talked about the fact that Pepe Correa in the corner of Wayne Johnson not been thrilled with what he's seen. After that fourth round, he flat out told Wayne Johnson, you cannot win this fight by decision. You need a knockout. Go after it. Teddy has it for zip. Only scheduled for six rounds. Johnson looking for that right hand. Solomon controlling the action, jumping in and out. They break, you're tied up. You could see the body language where it would show that Johnson is discouraged because a moment ago, he finally got a stable. Can you believe it? A stable Solomon standing still on the inside, and Johnson did nothing about it. He allowed himself to be tied up and did not look to punch when he had a moment to punch. All that awkwardness can put you in a trance, just numbs you. Then when all of a sudden the opportunity exists, he doesn't react to it. You know, remember that old commercial with one of those Rick, tablets that you took to up. take care of indigestion? Oh yeah. And you know, they I won't say the this, name this? of the I won't say the name of the product. No, but they used to say, How do you spell relief? And then they would go through the name of of course that tablet that you would take to settle your stomach. Well, how do you spell ugly as an ugly fight? Well, I would say it is S-O-L-I-M-A-N. And Solomon would tell you that at the end of the day, all he cares about is what starts with a W. Well, quite honestly, give him credit. A game, game guy. And he makes ugly beautiful as far as he's concerned. He's done it 34 times in his career. He has earned a world title shot with this style. He gave Winky Wright, a pound-for-pound -pound elite fighter, absolute fits. In fact, that fight took place in Connecticut, and the crowd there, majority of them, thought in watching the fight live that Solomon had pulled the upset. He's in control of this bronze medal match. But what will be the case in our main event for the contender finale between Saki Obika and J. Don Codrington? Brian Kenny. Joe, thank you. Let's go to J. Don Codrington right now in the dressing room. J. Don, Brian Kenny here. You've been very impressive in this tournament, but that's fewer than three full rounds so far. How do you handle the possibility of a long night with Bika? Well, I've been training extra hard more than ever. You know, I've been on a new uh, diet, including some different uh, vitamins, thanks to moneymarket.com, money, you know, and I've just been trying to train extra hard so I could finish stronger than I start. Slightly different event here, Jadon. How are you handling, you know, the big event? This is a little bigger than what you've been involved in so far in your career. How are you handling it so far? Well, I'm trying to take it in strides, you know, training hard as possible and not thinking about it. You know, uh, the less you go out, the less tension you feel. So I've been staying in and staying focused. J. Don, best of luck. Good talking with Thanks you. Thanks a lot, bro. J. Don Codrington again. Uh, we'll take on Saki Obika. We're getting closer to that main event. Joe? We are indeed. We have arrived at the sixth and final round of the bronze medal match. Sam Solomon, Wayne Johnson. They touch him up one final time. Wayne Johnson. You would think he has to go after it. But how do you go after this? Sam Solomon, the awkward style. No, that's the key. You don't go after Greg, it. You do Greg, not stop chase after Solomon because, again, you get caught up in that world, that crazy upside-down world that belongs to Solomon. But what you do have to do is not just stand there and watch it. You cannot just watch it transpire 
and funny. You, you have to engage. You got to be set when he comes at you, and he does come at you. That is when he's stable. That is when he's at the most orthodox place he's going to be when he's coming at you. That's when you have Great. to fire. Watch your head. Watch your and head. Johnson Great. has Great. not done fight. enough of that. Bucks. Dana and Sam's wife Maria looking on. See the words of encouragement coming from Dana, Wayne Johnson's fiance. Sam Solomon credits Maria and his mother, who flew in from Melbourne, Australia, and his entire support system really turning his career around. This is a guy who started his career, as we told you, without a trainer, without a manager, without a promoter, and he's built himself to this point. You know, you said early on, Joe, that the fight with Johnson, when Johnson had coming off his last head. fight on, to KO Wars to Covington, that that fight with Covington step was a step up in talent and class, and it was. Tonight was a step up in class and experience. And in a style that if you're a fighter, you hope you never see it again. I will say something though, styles like this, it's not showing tonight against the inexperienced Johnson. But a style like Solomon, they usually wear down. They start getting worn out a little bit. I mean, if you wanted proof of that, actually, you look at his two rematches in the career of Solomon against good fighters. Against Baker in 2002, he won a 12 round decision. And then, of course, in his last fight in 2007 against Baker, he lost an eight round decision. And Anthony Mundine in 2001, he loses a 12 round split decision. And then in 2007, he was knocked out for the first time in his career in nine rounds by that same fighter. So you do wear out when you fight like Solomon. The only problem, Johnson wishes that he would wear out a lot quicker. On that last exchange, Bluff close to touching the canvas. There's the clap, last 10 seconds. Solomon and Johnson. One final exchange. Stop punching, stop punching, stop punching. Johnson struggled for the answers. His fiance Dana concerned ringside. We will hear what the judges have to say when we come back and wrap up this bronze medal match. Welcome back to the TD Bank North Garden here on the site of the old Boston Garden where legends of the ring made for memorable fight nights decade after decade. Now a whole new scene here, the contender finale, and so many have come out to see this very special night, including Stuart Scott and family. Why not ringside at the contender? See who's going to win the big prize tonight. The bronze medal match, the punch track fight recap between Solomon and Johnson. Numbers don't always tell the story. Solomon, 145 to 69 advantage. The gap even bigger when it came to handling the styles. Johnson just could never figure it out. Teddy Atlas's scorecard, a clean sweep straight across the board. Joe, you know what Johnson's going to need after this fight? Not an, not an ice pack, but a therapist. <laughs> Indeed he is. And I think he'll feel that way when he hears these scores coming out of the mouth of Jeff Conner. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges' scorecards are in in this contender arena. Judge Roland Milton scores the bout 59-55. Judges Paul Driscoll and Leo Gersto see the bout 60-54. For the bronze medalist winner by unanimous decision, the King, Sam the King Solomon. A week from tonight, he's going to turn 34 years old, and he still has a lot of his boxing career ahead of him. A win for Sam Solomon, your bronze medal winner in this year's contender. Disappointment on the face of Dana DiMartino, the fiance of Wayne Johnson. But he said he learned a lot through this experience of being part of contender season three.